Defense. Joining us right now is Alabama Senator, member of the Senate Armed Services Committee, Tommy Tuberville. Senator, thanks very much for being here this morning. What do you know about this uh, this uh, strike? Well, as much as you do, uh, Maria, we're, we're, we're getting speculation from all sides. I'm not surprised. Uh, I'm really surprised it hadn't happened already, uh, you know, because when you're shooting missiles all the way across the country, as Russia has done, they, they tested a hypersonic about seven or eight months ago, shot, all, shot it from an airplane all the way across the country, and uh, it, it was pretty much a test. And so, you know, something like this happens, uh, you know, you hope, hope people hold their breath a little bit, find out what happens, and then hopefully it doesn't happen again. But uh, this thing's going to get out of control if we don't watch it. Well, I mean, how long is this going to go on? Death and destruction at Putin's hand. Joe Biden now wants to send more money to Ukraine. A lot of debate about that in America. Not a dime has been sent to the border. Yeah, we're going to borrow 50 billion more dollars from China to send to Ukraine. That makes a lot of sense. Our grandkids are going to have to pay for this, but uh, we've got to do more diplomacy. We got to, and, and I'm sure, hopefully, there's more going on behind the scenes that we don't know, Maria. But uh, we, we've got to get this stopped. Uh, Putin's backs against the wall. Ukrainians are fighting their tails off trying to save their country. Something's got to give here, and hopefully, it doesn't escalate. But what we saw yesterday can make it escalate very quickly, and we need to get control of it. There's no control right. Now. No control being what? I mean, should there be a, a, a response? H how do we get control of it? Well, we get control by, by doing diplomacy. Uh, instead of sending missiles, and I know that that's a response. Uh, it's not a very good response thinking yeah. that, hey, we're going we're to send billions of dollars more over there just because maybe a, a missile hit into another country and kill a couple of people, which is devastating. But again, we're, we're, on, the, we're on the edge here of, of Putin doing drastic things possibly because, again, he doesn't want to lose. He has no way out. There's mm -hmm. no way for him to, to get out of this without, without being totally embarrassed and maybe lose his job. So diplomacy is the only way. President Biden needs to get with his, He met with the Chinese president this week, okay? For the first time. He should have already been over there. He should he should have been talking to Putin every day. We've got all kind of problems here in this country, but that this could really get out of control. Well, I'm going to get the panel in in a minute, Senator, but I got to get your take on, on what's going on in the world. I mean, we got this situation in Russia. We got the Chinese Communist Party, uh, bad behavior, stealing intellectual property, a police station in New York, a CCP police station in New York, Joe Biden canceling uh, the China initiative. There, he, you know, he rolls over for the CCP time and time again. And of course, former President Trump has officially announced a third run for the White House. He's uh, picking up several endorsements, including Elise Stefanik, Marjorie Taylor Greene. Uh, here's uh, President Trump last night. Watch. Much criticism is being placed on the fact that the Republican Party should have done better. And frankly, much of this blame is correct. But the citizens of our country have not yet realized the full extent and gravity of the pain our nation is going through, and the total effect of the suffering is just starting to take hold. They don't quite feel it yet, but they will very soon. I have no doubt that by 2024, it will sadly be much worse, and they will see much more clearly what happened and what is happening to our country. So here we go, Senator. Uh, your reaction, are you going to back Trump for 2024? Hundred uh, percent. You know, you look at what he did, Maria. Before he was uh, kicked out of office, he he had this country going in the right direction. He's not a politician. He stood up to the the mainstream media. They don't like him. Uh, I can understand that. But he stood up for the American people. Look where we're at now. I've been up for two years since President Trump lost. This is devastating. Uh, we just elected this group to run this country again for two more years. We're getting ready. If we're not al already in a recession, it's getting ready to get really bad. You can't run a country or a, uh, this entire planet without fossil fuels, but they're hard-headed enough to try to get it done. The American people elected the Democrats to run, run the government again for two more years. This will be devastating because the replications of what's going to happen, a lot of money's out there. They flushed five, six trillion dollars over our budget into the economy. People felt good about that. They had money in their pocket. Yeah. Money's not going to be in their pocket here in a couple of years, and it's going to get really rough. Yeah, well, what's wrong with the Republicans? I mean, they can't stick together. Mitch McConnell, uh, you know, a whole
holding the purse strings throughout the whole campaign season, not sending uh, Trump candidates enough money. The Senate is now scheduled to hold these leadership votes later today. And Florida Senator Rick Scott is challenging Mitch McConnell for minority leader. Should these elections take place today when we don't even know who's going to be running uh, the senator from Georgia? We don't even know what happened. Uh, what, what's your take on these leadership elections? Well, hopefully we get to vote today in at 930 Eastern time in these meetings, caucus meetings, and to decide whether to vote now or later. I'm for later. I think we should have a full complement of, of uh, senators here. Uh, I think Herschel Walker will win. He needs the opportunity to have his say. Uh, there's no rush. Uh, you've got people trying to push this one way or the other. Again, you're, uh, Maria, you're going to have you're going to have people discuss different things and arguments. But at the end of the day, like I was when I was a football coach, we argued about game plan. When you come out of your caucus meeting, you better be on the same page. This country is in trouble. We don't need a division in the Republican Party, the party with common sense that believes in the United States of America and the Constitution. I think once we get this settled, I think everybody will be on the same page. Uh, I will vote for uh, uh, Leader McConnell. Uh, I hadn't agreed with everything he's done. Uh, people didn't agree with everything I did when I was a head football coach. You're not going to please everybody, but you want to be uh, in the direction to help this country and help all people in this country, not just a few. Yeah, well said. Senator, it's Kenny Polkari. Thank you. I, I got to ask you a question because as a voter and someone that was expecting a different outcome uh, from the election, I got to ask you, where did the GOP drop the ball? Because according to all the polls, there was supposed to be this big wave and there was nothing that mimicked the big wave at all. And it appears to me that the GOP just completely dropped the ball. Well, first of all, being in this business only for a couple of years, I, I saw things I never thought I'd see in this country. The Democrats just flat out lying of what they, what we were going to do and what they were going to do. Talking about Medicare and Social Security, there's nobody that, that likes and, and wants to defend Medicare and Social Security more than the Republicans. Well, then why? Uh, it's, in, yeah. it's in trouble. It's in trouble. And that's what Rick Scott brought up. It's in trouble. We need to address it where we can save it for everybody. Yeah. Uh, both will be out of business in eight to ten years if we don't make some kind of tough decisions. Understood. But we allowed, or the GOP allowed, the Democrats to take control of that conversation. Well, I understand that. Uh, uh, this was a 50-state vote all over the country. Uh, the, i tell you wh who, what really got us. The early vote, we got to understand more yeah. about uh, uh, the grassroots uh, campaigning, getting people out early to vote, and the 18- to 30-year-olds hammered us because uh, they hadn't seen the light at the end of the tunnel yet. They're not right. paying the taxes that they're right. getting ready to pay in the near future. And this climate change stuff, you know, we're sending billions all over the world of these kids' money, yeah. and they voted to do that. So we're going to find out in the near future well, where they stand. That was another lie. Uh, the, the president said that he was going to forgive everybody's debt, and college students believed it. They came out, and of course, after the, uh, the elections, a judge ruled it down unconstitutional. Senator, thank you. It's always a pleasure to thank see you. you.